So, at long last, years after it was first announced, we just saw the English dub release of the Miraculous movie on Netflix, and yeah, after what we saw with the most recent season of Miraculous, I think the franchise really did need a bit of a win, and I kind of think we got that here. I rather enjoyed the film. Was it perfect? No. But in a lot of ways, I think it took the source material, the original story of the show, the original characters, and very much improved upon it to make a rather enjoyable cinematic experience. And I think that's really the general consensus I've seen so far, at least among the fan base. Correct me if I'm wrong here, of course. It's that the film is fairly good, and it's nothing revolutionary or anything like that, but it's still fun all around. It has a pretty good score on Rotten Tomatoes, from an audience perspective at least, an 89% from 250 reviews as of checking it. And yeah, that's really quite good. Although, the critical score is very low, 40% off of 5 reviews. Which, well obviously is not a very high score, is it? But at the same time, usually you'd have way more reviews to average out that score a bit better, so... Not really sure we can really view those numbers as a very reliable indicator just yet. Regardless, doesn't really matter. What does matter is what we all thought of it, and I guess since you clicked the video, what I thought of it. And like I said, it was good. It had a lot to like, and some things to dislike, if I'm being honest. And I guess we'll just start to work our way through that right now. Okay, so for starters, my god, the animation quality is off the charts. I know that the trailers made it seem like it was going to be good already, but at the same time, I kind of expected there would be a dip from trailer to film. Sometimes that does happen, and if it was going to happen to any animated film, with the luck that this fandom seems to have, I was going to say it was going to happen in the Miraculous movie, but no. The animation looked great, once again. Look at this water. But something extra to note that wasn't quite as heavily showcased in the previous trailers, the hair. The hair, my god, look at the hair. This is honestly such unexpectedly good animation for the type of film that this is. It's like proper top tier American studio animation type of stuff. Yeah, I realize the budget likely has something to do with this, but at the same time, I can't help but be impressed. It's truly night and day from the actual show. Like, it's literally the, mum, can we get some miraculous? No, oh, no, no, we have miraculous at home type of meme. I mean, damn, how do you go back to this? It's like when you start drinking really top tier quality coffee or eating high quality cheese or whatever. You just can't go back. It makes you sad to go back. Anyway, moving on, the top tier visual quality and the top tier animation come together to form some really great action sequences. Basically, every action sequence, every fight, just even the sequence of scenes and how the characters are blocked out for our viewing pleasure, it's all leagues and leagues ahead of anything we've seen before in the show. And even if you don't compare it with the show, it's just genuinely well designed. It's well choreographed fighting and action sequences. And I especially love the huge battle montage in the middle of the film where they're taking on all the Akumatized villains or maybe the Ferris wheel battle too. Seriously, it was all just so exciting and fast paced and bombastic. It's exactly what you're looking for from this sort of light-hearted superhero film, so props there. So already a visual marvel, which is a great start. But there are two other major elements we need to take a look at for this sort of film. The narrative and everything that that entails. And since we're dealing with a musical film, the songs as well. And I'll be real, my girlfriend loved the songs. She enjoyed the hell out of those songs. She was telling me, oh, these songs are great. But me, eh. It's not like I thought they were bad, but at the same time, they didn't really stick in my head whatsoever, which kind of goes against the point of these sort of things, really. When you have an animated musical, the main purpose of the music is to be catchy as hell. To really stick in your mind and make you want to listen again and again and again. Buy the soundtrack, rewatch the film on repeat, that sort of thing. The filmmakers are pretty much screaming in your ears, give me more money. And whilst I did enjoy the songs, even when the French accent really slipped out during some of Marinette's sequences and made it so much more jarring that the voices are so different to one another, I don't think they have that same level of replayability that you see in something like a Disney film. Which, you know, it's not the end of the world, but at the same time, I can't help but think that maybe the film would have been a bit better without the songs, maybe? Like, what do you reckon? Like, I think the song montage is like they did with the main theme when they were fighting the enemies, that worked really well. And I think that those sort of songs, where it's almost reminiscent of how Shrek, that franchise, handles songs, where it's not actually sung by the characters but over the top and used to convey a specific mood, would have probably been a much better fit for this sort of film. It just kind of feels jarring when they start belting out a song out of nowhere, really out of place. Although, like I said, my girlfriend did love the song, so maybe this is a me problem. But I will admit, I did like Tiki's song though. I thought it was fun. And that one was probably the most catchy and memorable to me. Besides the main theme song, of course, but that one's just iconic. You can't compete with that. So yeah, great visuals and a bit of a lackluster soundtrack. So what this thing really needed was a top tier narrative. And that means good plot, good scripting, as in the dialogue and all, and well-developed characters. 
And for the most part, I do think the film did this quite well. Okay, so the story itself, it's really bare bones. Let's be real, right? Not much happens. They meet, they become heroes, they fall in love with the alter egos, they fight Hawkmoth, and Gabe gets his redemption, and that's a wrap. Right, obviously more happens than that, but that's the bare bones plot. And so, the story isn't all that much to write home about. And part of me kind of thinks it's because Zag condensed five seasons into an hour and 40 minutes. And thus, nothing gets fleshed out in much depth at all. It's all surface level. Like, we get some Adrian Marinette and Ladybug Cat Noir romantic development over the course of a montage and a brief time skip, and of course that does take up the bulk of their story in the middle of the film, but at the same time, you can't help but think that maybe it would have been better if the story had been broken up into smaller parts. Maybe planned two films, you know? Like, obviously they have that cliffhanger ending at the end with Natalie and Emily, but still, you could have kept Gabe around, keep that story going. And yeah, it's the same with Gabe. The heart of his story is that he wants to reunite with his wife and have all their family together. But he hardly even interacts with Adrian in the movie. And thus, the big emotional climax of the film falls super flat, if you ask me. Because on screen, we haven't seen them develop their connection. In short, I think the film really does take for granted that you've watched the show. And thus, you don't need to see these arcs play out in depth. And that's fine to a certain extent, but now, as time passes, that overlap of people that have seen the show and the movie is going to lessen. And the movie's going to start to look, you know, even worse. In 10 years, who knows if people are going to have watched all the seasons of the show. It's much easier to just start by watching the movies. After all, if people are still re-watching classic animated films from, what, the 90s, the 80s, and beyond, why not this too? And so now you run into that problem of the story being really bare bones and relying on that connection, which may no longer exist. You get what I mean? However, all that aside, the film actually did a couple of things that were just so good as well. Whilst yes, the emotion of the ending did kind of fall flat, for me at the same time I was watching this thinking, holy shit, why wasn't this the ending of the show? Hawkmoth versus the heroes, he takes down Ladybug, steals a miraculous, that'd be a big moment. Give Cat Noir some time to shine and he and Cat Noir fight and it looks like Gabe's gonna win but then Marinette, no powers, intervenes and takes the hit. Cat Noir then rallies, and it becomes clear over the course of the rest of the fight that Adrian is Cat Noir, and thus in that moment, Gabe can't handle it, and he renounces villainy. They can have their big emotional embrace, and obviously, there's more in the show in terms of context that's going to change things from there. Gabe's dying, so him revealing that, and then having Cat Noir give him the miraculous so he can sacrifice himself would be a really bittersweet ending, a really powerful ending. And then you have Emily and Gabe embrace, and, you know, you could have included Adrian in that big magical embrace before Gabe becomes dust. And then do the surprise identity reveal at the end like they do in the movie. I think that would have been really good. Oh my god. This ending's just so much better. Imagine doing your massive ending for your five season arc that took you like, what, eight years? And a couple of weeks later, your boss releases a film adaptation that looks better in every way that upstages you completely and utterly. Is that just not the embodiment of cringe right there? I mean, I kind of feel bad for Asterix a little bit. <laughs> Seriously, it's actually straight up stomach churning thinking of that happening to somebody in front of their entire fan base. But yes, the ending, top tier. The identity reveal, the Gabe's arc conclusion, it's all just great. All so well done. Even if they didn't have enough time over the course of the film to adequately build to that moment. I mean, we hardly even ever saw Gabe. And so, I think where the film really triumphs is just improving the characters' personalities. Improving how they interact with one another and what they do. That's where the film triumphs. It succeeds in developing these characters and making them feel interesting and realistic and normal. I like that a lot of Marinette's character was stripped away. Gone was the social butterfly, replaced with a lonely and insecure girl who finds her confidence over the course of the film as she becomes a hero. She comes out of her shell. It was a really unexpected choice, but one that I really liked. It worked so well. Same with Adrian. He has so much more personality when he's just being Adrian here. He's got a little bit more of an edge. I mean, he called Marinette weird behind her back, doesn't he? <laughs> They straight up feel less like caricatures and more like actual teenagers. And their romance makes sense. They're falling in love as both Ladybug and Cat Noir and Marinette and Adrian. And it's without the creepy shit the show loves to use. No stalker stuff here, thank God. Just normal, awkward teenage romance. That's all it is. Oh, Zag. He gets it. He gets it. This is how it's done. I just wish it had so much more time to breathe, you know? It just all feels very rushed. And so you don't get to explore that dynamic at all. Or just the love square, really. The love square is one of the show's most iconic features. And it hardly figures into this movie at all. So it's a shame that it doesn't get to flourish before they did a reveal. So now they'll never get to explore that, really. And 
uh, just missed opportunity. I mean, maybe they weren't sure if they'd get a chance for a sequel, but still, you should have taken the gamble. It would have made the film much better. On top of that, I enjoyed Chloe being shifted from the Antichrist into a more generic mean girl type of person. She's a bully, but you know, not evil incarnate. I think it works better and keeps the options open if Zag wants to move in a different direction to the show. Which, I don't know, I think it's possible, but I guess we'll have to wait and see. On top of that, I enjoyed Sabrina's more sympathetic portrayal. Since the show did go with a late stage redemption arc for her, it makes so much more sense to have her portrayed as less of a piece of shit. Similarly, Gabe, he's less of a piece of shit too. Instead of making him irredeemably cruel and abusive, they show a man that's desperate and lonely and depressed. He just wants his family to be whole again. Loved how they had Adrian stand up to him and you're just expecting him to scream at him like he does in the show and then he just pretty much starts crying. Adrian, no! It's such a new and different interpretation of the character that, for me, works a lot better because it makes that redemption arc at the ending feel more natural than it does in the show where suddenly they're just like, oh yeah, he was such a good guy, when he clearly wasn't. And on top of that, I also like that they fleshed out a bit of his personality, like his fashion abilities. The dude's meant to be a guru, but he doesn't show that in the show. He just has clothes pre-made and is already doing it. But here, he's actually suggesting things, giving tips. And I like that. I'm glad they showed that off. Moving on. Foo, he was excellent. So weird and quirky and strange, and it made so much sense. The dude lives alone with magical creatures that only he can see. Only he knows about them. Of course he's going to be kooky. His first meeting with Marinette? That's hilarious. A really unexpected way to portray the character, but so much better than the generic wise old man that he was before. And then, I think maybe Tiki and Plague are the two characters that had a bit of a shift too. I'll be real didn't like Plague, lost all his charm, and his bond with Adrian seemed more like a begrudging tough love type of situation. He's just a walking fart joke, and fart jokes, you know, like they can be funny, but his were not. Although on the other hand, I did love Sassy Tiki. Just, just felt right. The banter between them was so good, and it gave a usually very vanilla character a lot of life. And honestly, I think that's what the film does really well. It takes the caricatures, and makes them more normal, and takes the boring characters, and makes them more interesting. And that's what I loved. That's what they did well here. And I think it was the right decision. And apart from that, they didn't really showcase many other characters, and that was also for the best. You don't want to make things too busy when you already can't fit enough of your main characters in the hour and 40 minutes. Should have been a two-parter. I'll say it until I die. Should have been two parts. <sighs> and so, yeah, that's the end of the video. What did you like about the movie? What did you dislike about the movie? Anything you'd like to add? Please like, comment, and subscribe. You know the deal. And so, I will leave you with this cursed image of long-haired Gabe. Enjoy.